So I was just binging YouTube and I stumbled upon Juxtapose Shortest UI and UX course and it's probably the best crash course I've ever taken. So after watching it, I never felt so motivated to build a side project on my own. But the thing is, what on earth do I build? Well, from my perspective, a side project shouldn't only help me practice my skills as a developer and designer, but also get the opportunity to solve my problems and others' problems. So I really thought about it. When I started web development and web design, I really struggled to find quality resources for like web design inspiration, or even tools to help me code or design better, or even like learning platforms that I can learn from to improve my skills. I had to scramble through a lot of resources to really find what I wanted. There weren't any resources that compiled the exact tools and resources I needed to really elevate my growth as a creative front dev and web designer. And I eventually used Notion to compile all the resources I found, but it got to a point where it was a little bit unmanageable and it only worked as a temporary solution. So I knew exactly what to build, a curated resource gallery that stores all types of resources into one place. But before actually jumping into designing, I actually need some kind of data to show that people actually struggle to find quality resources. So I used YouTube polls to initially see if people really struggle with finding resources. And also the amount of interest that I get on my resource videos are also somewhat a good indicator that people are looking for resources as well. So now there's some demand, let's kick off the project. I always have the urge to jump straight into designing, but today I'm a different man. So I started first with some initial UX processes such as site mapping and creating a user flow diagram. And for my site maps, I used Relume AI site mapping to help me out with mapping the pages and the content I would have on my website. And site mapping helps a lot with providing structure to your website so you can stick to that specific scope when you're designing. As for a user flow diagram, since it's a relatively simple content website, I mapped out the ideal user journey to visualize the paths my users would take to navigate to different resources or filter by categories. This stage really ensures clear user interaction and the experience of the website, so it doesn't suck. Once that's done, let's decide the style of the website. I took a lot of inspiration from sites like darkmodedesign.com, Stacksorted, and Minimal Gallery, and shout out to the creators for curating awesome websites like these. Surprisingly and unsurprisingly, this one of the projects I skipped the moodboarding process because I immediately knew what kind of style that I want my website to look like. So, goodbye moodboarding. Goodbye. And for colors, once again, I took a big inspiration from the resources sites I've mentioned. So I went with a dark and neutral colors palette with a key accent brand color. Keeping it simple, less is more. Well, actually not really. Then for a basic design system, I used my project star template to kick things off. And to be honest with you, it's impossible to have a comprehensive design system right away. So having this basic project star template really helps as the project skills, since you can add your own styles, components, grids very easily as you progress. And this is how my design system looks like at the end. And it definitely does not look like a multi-billion dollar company design system, but yeah, it doesn't have to. I also recommend using component libraries such as Talbit.io or Relume Figma Kit to build out your design system. They both have great components for your web projects and I cannot recommend them enough. If you want to see how the project star template works, make sure to check out the video here or this corner or this corner. Okay, whatever corner it's in. Next up. This is the easiest step of all. We need a name for this resource that represent the meaning of providing foundation for web devs and web designers. Just give me five minutes. Okay, you know what? Let's just fast forward this step. Okay, done. Now we've got a cool name. Let's go over the brand assets, typography, and all that jazzy visual stuff. I like my branding to be simple and reflect the pillar stack name well. And I'm going back to JP and his SVGs to make my logo. They save me all the time. And for typography, I decided to go with overused grotesque typeface to stay consistent with my personal branding because that's what I use on my personal website. All right, let's design the website. With the wireframing process, first of all, I stopped using Copics for wireframing. And don't ask me why. Second, I stopped wireframing on paper because I love 
Anyhow, since the goal of the website is to help users find the resources, the wireframe should reflect the goal and help users achieve the goal of finding the resources that they need as effectively and efficiently as possible. So how can we achieve that? Well, first, let's lay out the hero section, the nav bar, and the footer first. Then after us, we can just place all the resources in a page and the users can just browse for resources immediately without any hassle as soon as they land on the page like this and afterwards we can place the category filters maybe around like here so the users can filter by type of resources i also added categories and tags for each resources to improve understandability and context now the wireframes are done it's time for the fun part this stage took a lot of iterations but i made sure the design really reflects the intended style i was going for and I wanted the website to feel like it's spotlighting each of the resources with very subtle lighting and elegance. One of the time-consuming process was constantly editing the design system from colors, type scale, and components to achieve a specific style. That's one thing about the iterative process, you always have to add and remove stuff as you design along the way. One other thing I also made sure is that everything on my website was accessible. This can be done by using a contrast checker tool on Figma or anywhere else to make sure that your users don't have a hard time reading the text or seeing elements on your website. And this ensures a really good user experience. And also using grid layouts as a guide also really helps organize your design so it looks cohesive and visually balanced. And I cannot agree more about the importance of copywriting from Juxtapose video. The time of using Lorem Ipsum is gone, especially with generative AI such as ChatGPT or Google Bard. You can instantly generate meaningful copies so you can actually visualize how your design would look like at the end. Now we've got all the pieces of the design ready, let me talk to you about today's sponsor, Course Careers. So do you want to build projects like this and more, but you feel like you don't have the skills yet or you don't know where to start? I mean, I've been there before and I'll probably be there again, but anyhow, Course Careers is a perfect platform for you to start bringing to front development if you're a self-taught developer like me. Course Careers have a premium software development path where they teach you the fundamentals of software engineering and then you can specialize in front development or other specializations. The front specialization is taught by Web Dev Simplified where he goes over the nitty gritty stuff of the web. So you'll be learning stuff like CSS, JavaScript, React, and then how to prepare yourself to get a job. And one other thing I also really like about Course Careers compared to other courses is that they actually have industry professionals who provide one-on-one -on -one coaching with you. This way you can get mentorship from people who are actually working in the industry. And they also have partner employers on their platform that request to interview those who have completed the course. So you can get jobs without even directly applying to the companies themselves. And to be honest, that's pretty crazy. So Course Careers has a free introduction course you can take so you can see whether if the course is right for you before even making the final purchase. And I'm sure even with the free introduction course, you can get a lot of value out of it. So yeah, uh, click the link below down in the description to kickstart your career in front of development without any experience or without any degree. Yeah. Honestly, one of the most brain damaging process throughout this project is the development part. And since I'm a masochist, I challenge myself once again to brute force myself to learn a new framework while building this project. Man, why do I do this to myself? And let me tell you, figuring things out as you build is probably one of the most painful ways to learn. And I think if you're happy with going through five stages of grief, then yeah, I think it's one of the most effective ways to learn anything. But at the end of the day, once you get it, oh boy, let me tell you, you better be pulling these moves. But to really get this breakthrough, I spent a lot of time reading documentation over and over again. And also experimenting with code that does not work, sending over 100 messages with an amazing guy on the Next.js Discord server that really taught me more about the Next.js ecosystem. If you're watching this video, man, I cannot thank you enough. I also recommend reaching out to developer communities because they're bound to help you and trust me on this, you will learn so many valuable things that you might not know. But also don't forget to take breaks and recharge your brain so you can come back to the problem with a fresh mind. Doing some stretches, some exercising, some reading or whatever you can do to take your mind off the code. It's probably the best way to expand your brain. And it does not just end there. After the development process, there's so many other things you should consider as well. From testing for usability, responsiveness, 
getting user feedback, search, and search engine optimization, performance optimization, and so many other things as well. This project is constantly still in development, and if you'd like to contribute to any part of it, feel free to submit resources, submit feedback, or even contribute to a repo. And if you want to join a community of like-minded people, I also have a Discord server, so feel free to join the channel via the link in the description. Building this project was for sure a memorable experience. If you'd like some more tips or resources to build projects like this, it would be awesome if you could do your thing down there or check out these other videos because I literally spent ages and centuries making this video. So your support would be awesome. But other than that, thanks for sticking around. Till next time.